<laughs> yeah, so I was a Peace Corps volunteer, like many of my co-storytellers. Um, and how many of you guys have heard of the slogan, the toughest, toughest job you'll ever love? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's Peace Corps' slogan. And for me, it was pretty much true. I lucked out. I got to go to Morocco, which, you know, give me a break. I mean, it was not a hardship post. Um, the volunteers next door in Mauritania, where there was desert, there was potatoes and onions to eat. They would all come to Morocco to, um, you know, take a break because... You know, let's face it, they had kind of not a cushy post. So, you know, all in all, Morocco is a beautiful place. Tourists go there, you know, it's exotic. They can go to Marrakesh, buy carpets, la la la. It's, it's gorgeous, right? So, basically, I loved it. But there's one thing that I really didn't like about my time in Morocco. And that was the street harassment from the men who would sit in their cafes, their little cups of coffee and their cigarettes, and they would spout out whatever. Usually it was gazelle. And I could never understand that. It's like, why am I being called a gazelle? I mean, that's like a four-legged animal. It's not attractive, it's not sexy. Or they'd even come out with, Voulez-vous coucher avec moi? And I'm like, wait, that's what American guys say when they don't know how to speak French. So I'm, I'm really confused. Um, but really, it was it was tough. It was like walking past a construction site every single day from the time that I left my house in the morning to the time I got on my little moped and got to my little school or my big school. But um, it was constant. But there was a refuge from all that, and that was my boyfriend's family's house, kind of my adopted family. And we would spend a lot of time together. I would just sit around with them in the living room, in the salon, on the pond, you know, these little ponds. And um, we'd usually be sharing this yummy tagine, like a t chicken and preserved lemons, or lamb and almonds with. Um, with prunes, you know, not shabby as far as eating. Um, and we'd be chatting, and my boyfriend's father would speak to me in classical Arabic, and I'd understand nothing. And I'd be like, yeah, 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 smile, wave, you know. Um, but wonderful family. And usually the TV was on while we were having lunch or dinner, and it would be maybe an Egyptian soap opera or a really, really bad American TV show like Dallas or Knott's Landing. <laughs> and I thought, oh God, that's what they think of Americans. But that's, what it, that's what we Peace Corps volunteers were there for, to show them something else, right? So one day, we're just sitting around, shooting the breeze, and Miami Vice comes on the TV. And I don't know if you guys remember that, if you're you were of that ilk, but um, Miami Vice is like the quintessential cop show of the 80s, and it was very popular at the time, late 80s, early 90s. Um, you know, and they, basically there's these, there's a white cop and a black cop, and this is back when cops were actually uh, respected. <laughs> and they were like bringing down the drug czars in Miami, and they're like, you know, in the speedboats, and... You know, the music's going. And very, 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 very popular show. But I see it on TV and I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God, I left that. And that was a different form of harassment that I experienced one year earlier when I was, yes, the very most youngest intern ever at Miami Vice, the TV show. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep going before you can do the math. Anyway, um, I didn't bother to explain to my family like that I had ever worked there because they would have thrown all these questions at me like, oh, how glamorous was it? Did you get to meet Don Johnson? And I'm like, oh, I couldn't deal with that because it really was not glamorous. So, on that note, I'll go rewind back to when I worked at Miami Vice as a lowly little intern making $300 a week 
um, because I got a communications degree from a Florida State school, so they would pay my salary, which was $300 a week. Um, so basically my job in the producer's office was just to answer the phone. Very simple, not too, not too complicated. Phone would ring and I'd say, producer's office, Miami Vice, may I help you? That's all I had to do. I had a few other jobs, or a few other like duties. Um, one was getting groceries for the the set because they had to go on their scouts and they had to have Evian water in the van, or all hell would break loose. So I would get up at 7 a.m. and leave my little house in in Miami and to get there at 8:30 because of the traffic and. You know, but the, the most important thing was that I would get, at the store, low-fat, no-salt bran muffins for the producer. The producer, whose name was Richard Bombs, <laughs> ran the place with an iron fist. And if he didn't have that low-salt, no-fat bran muffin on his desk at 9 a.m., you better believe I would have heard it <laughs> about it. So just think of Swimming with Sharks, if you ever saw that movie. I mean, it was really like that. This guy was such a not nice person. <laughs> and so he had two assistants directly working for him that were right outside his office, and he would never use his intercom, ever. He would just scream at them from his office and say, Get this! Get this! What the beep is, is wrong with this? Get this here! Why is this not here? Beep! Beep! You know, basically beep, beep, beep. All epithets, all, all profanity. And um, let's just call his two assistants his witches, right? And he would just order them around. And, and if he didn't have that brand muffin, well, I was across the hall, so I was a little bit away from the fray, you know? I was like, God. But I made sure that he had that damn brand muffin on his desk every morning. So anyway, one day, not too far into my tenure at this Miami Vice producer's office, um, I got a phone call. Phone rings. Ring. Producer's office, Miami Vice, may I help you? Give me dick. <laughs> <laughs> but that's weird. Okay, let's try that again. I'm not sure I understood what that guy said. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, may I help you, sir? Give me dick! <laughs> I thought, well, I did hear that. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, my father's name's Richard, my brother's name's Richard. I know that dick probably means the producer. So, okay, I said, okay. Um, hold on, sir. Let me see if he's available. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. He's on the phone. May I have him call you back? You mean you don't know who this is? Like, mm, I guess I should know who this is. Whoever it is can call him Dick, and none of us can call him Dick. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> so I tra he says, get me Kathy. And Kathy was one of the witches that worked right next to Mr. Bombs. So I transfer him there. And then I'm thinking, hmm, I have this uneasy feeling, like I just fucked up and said, <laughs> So five minutes later, Kathy says, Virginia, can you come into my office, please? And I'm like, shit. She says, Virginia, do you know who that was? I said, no. Should I? She said, that was Don Johnson. He runs this show, and when he asks for dick, you get him dick. <laughs> and by the way, he's the only one who can call Richard Dick. You got that? Oh, by the way, he said to get you fired. But since you're here, you're new here, we'll give you another chance. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I go back to my back to my little munchkin desk. It's actually called the munchkin desk by one of the directors. I'm like, I'm gonna come back here again. I'm not gonna become anything here. Phone rings again. Bing. Producer's office. Miami Vice. May I help you? Give me dick. <laughs> and I'm not stupid, right? I, I like now. I know who it is. Now I know I have to kiss. You know what? I'm like, 
I'm so sorry, Mr. Johnson. I had no idea it was you. I'm a little new here. So he's like, oh, that's all right, sweetheart. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Transferred him over there. So after that, I was just like, whatever. You know, I'm just going to play the game. You know, do my thing. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it somehow, but not by being an intern. <laughs> so a couple weeks later, I get a third call. But it's not at the office. It's at home. And it's the Peace Corps. And they say, you know what? We'd like to invite you to Morocco for the toughest job you'll ever love. <laughs> I said, I didn't have to think twice. I was like, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> so Miami Vice became the toughest job I would ever leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.